the way high-risk women are perceived really and the choices that they make and the reason for this is because I myself this is my fourth pregnancy and when I book in at the hospital we talk about my history and my history is this I've had three miscarriages I've had placenta previa grade four and a hemorrhage at that birth I've had a preterm birth um, due to decelerations I've had two emergency caesarean sections I am 37 I'm considered obese because my BMI is slightly raised 32.9 but um, yeah so I've got oh and I've had gestational diabetes in one of my pregnancies so because of that I tick the box high risk um, now when people hear my history they go oh, isn't that terrible or you know straight away fear sets in from anybody sometimes healthcare professionals family friends so I wanted to reintroduce myself the way I see myself and I think that I've had three miscarriages my first ever pregnancy was a miscarriage so I think that it's quite normal for my body to reject somebody else's DNA um, but the other two miscarriages I don't know why they happened and they happened last year and they was both babies that we really wanted and we lost them both so it was pretty sad and this is my pregnancy following those miscarriages so to me this is really a positive I'm really excited about it I'm six months pregnant and I'm still holding on to this baby so I've got a really positive mindset because it is a really positive thing now I've had gestational diabetes in one of my three pregnancies I've had placenta previa grade 4 in one of my three pregnancies I had to have one of my sons delivered at 32 weeks because of fetal deceleration now that has no bearing on any of my other pregnancies and none of my other pregnancies was preterm birth so at the moment in this pregnancy even though I carry the labels and I carry the history from my previous births I don't really perceive myself as being high risk my only risks are that I've had two cesarean sections but I've also had a vaginal birth after those cesarean sections so I know that my body works really well and it does everything that it's supposed to do and I feel really confident in my body so all in all I feel really positive I've got no medical conditions whatsoever my blood pressure's fine my observations are always fine and I feel really healthy and really positive now Recently, I was, I had an appointment at 24 weeks with the consultant. Now, I chose to cancel that appointment, and it's not that I'm declining consultant care. That's probably the way that it's perceived by some, but I cancelled it just because I can't see how I would benefit from an appointment with a doctor at 24 weeks to discuss my pregnancy because I have no medical complications at all and I'm a woman that's feeling really positive about birth feeling really healthy and I'm going to have a vaginal birth so I don't know what the benefit of me having this appointment at 24 weeks with a doctor is now my previous experience of um, doctor's appointments to discuss vaginal birth after caesarean wasn't very positive now a midwife has said to me that at 36 weeks she recommends that I see the consultant to discuss my home birth now that won't be a discussion that I will be having with a consultant if I won't be having that discussion with a consultant not about my home birth anyway because my previous experience of discussing vaginal birth in a hospital after two cesareans with a consultant was pretty stressful in fact it was really stressful 
And at that appointment, I felt that I was better informed regarding statistics, guidance, um, women's stories, risk perception, than actually what the consultant was. And the conversation was coming from a place of fear and it was very risk focused and it just didn't make me feel good at all. So I, again, at 36 weeks, I, I've got no intention. If I stay the way I am healthy and I've got no medical complications, then I don't really think that I will benefit from having a, cons a discussion with a consultant about my choices to home birth. Um, because I just don't see how he can help me or she could help me. A midwife, yes, because I plan to give birth. So she's she's who I'm going to need the support from. I would be prepared to have a have a discussion with the consultant regarding my choices in the event that birth changed and I needed a home birth. I needed a cesarean section. So I'd be prepared to discuss how they would facilitate a woman-centred caesarean or how they would make me feel better about a caesarean birth because I, my previous um, experiences of emergency caesarean section, particularly the one under general anaesthetic, was really traumatic and I just, I've got terrible memories of that. So that would be the only kind of discussion that I would have with a consultant is that in the event that my pregnancy took a turn, my birth took a turn for the worse and I needed medical intervention, what they would do to make me feel better about that. But I don't feel that I need to discuss my choices regarding home birth with a consultant. I just don't think that I know the risks. I'm well informed. I spend just through leisure probably at least at least an hour a day speaking to other women in my situation researching evidence researching statistics um and i'm i feel pretty informed and actually i don't feel scared of birth at all i'm actually really looking forward to it um and i feel really positive and i want to stay on that i want to stay on that positive note now also part of the reason why i've chose to have a home birth is that i feel that i'm safe in my house and i can control who's coming in my house i can control the environment that i birth in and this time i want to create an environment that's very similar to the one that i would make love in because i know that that's optimal for physiological birth and i can't do that in a hospital and I want to give birth in a birthing pool. And I can't guarantee that there's going to be a birthing pool available for me. Or at least I want to use one for pain relief. So I know that in my own house, I can create the right environment. I can have the birth pool that I wish. And I can have who, who I want to be at my birth. Now, my VBAC after two cesarean sections in a hospital was pretty stressful. Um... I chose the hospital because I felt safest, but it was, it was a fight. It was a fight from the second that I walked in to having to be examined to see where I was at and then being felt like I was on the clock to check my progress. And I was constantly offered cesarean section. I was offered to have my waters broke. Um, I had different people coming in and out of the room. I, there was a some kind of cupboard in my room and people kept coming in to get stuff from the cupboard and it was bright and although I could move around because I kept going to the toilet, it was it was a bit limited and having had that experience and I needed that because I felt safer at that point in hospital but this time I feel perfectly safe in my own house and I know that if whoever's going to be coming out to care for me will be experienced. It's going to be an experienced midwife and because I'm planning a home birth, at my appointments I've had a community midwife that's been coming to my house and the chances are it's going to be the same midwife that will be attending me at birth. So I'm starting to get to know her 
and building up a relationship with her and that is really nice. Whereas if I go into hospital, I can't guarantee who's going to be on shift on that day. And I can't guarantee how many women are going to be there giving birth. I don't know how busy the world's going to be. I don't know the pressures that all the staff are going on that have got on their shoulders that day. So I couldn't control that environment at all. Whereas in my own home, there's going to be no other women giving birth in my home. I'm going to be the goddess and I'm going to be the focus. And and that's what I want. And it's my own germs, so this the risk of infection are lower. So that's what I'm choosing. And I've looked at transfer times, and I think it would probably be about 15 minutes it would take to transfer. And I'm pretty sure that because I will have an experienced midwife with me, that if she picks up on any signs, she would call an ambulance. And in that time, they can be prepping the theatre. Now... When I had my vaginal birth in hospital, my midwife, her job was to support me, but she had to sit and watch the monitor because they wanted me to be continuously fetal monitored. So I, she was watching the monitor and she kind of tranced out a bit, so she had to go for a break. And in that break, they gave me a student midwife I'm 90% sure it was a student midwife and she was absolutely fantastic she was she was lovely however when I said to her that I feel that I need to push it panicked her a bit and she was saying no 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 you're not at that stage yet and I know I could tell that she felt stressed because she came up in red blotches and anyway I gave birth with the student midwife and she was brilliant she was brilliant but I could tell she felt a little bit out of her depth and when it came to after birth I needed to be stitched up and she said to me she needs to go and get somebody to stitch me because she hasn't done it before. Now the, there wasn't anybody else available to stitch me so they said to her that she had to stitch me and somebody would supervise her. Now she apologised for this because she didn't feel she was really nervous about doing this and I just was so I was in cuckoo land I'd just given birth and everybody had doubted me so I just didn't even question it but she stitched me up and then the consultant checked me and said to her you've done it all wrong it's all too loose it's all got to come out again and you need to be stitched again so as much as she was a brilliant midwife I don't think that I was perhaps in the best hands. So this is another reason why I want a home birth and I want to be where I feel safe. And with my second pregnancy, my emergency caesarean birth under general anaesthetic due to placenta previa, I hemorrhaged and I was in the hospital when I hemorrhaged. And because of the severity of it, I had to have a consultant obstetrician um, do my surgery. Now at that point there wasn't a consultant obstetrician on site because I think it was about seven in the morning so that to call him in and in that time my husband was able to phone my mum and my mum came to my house and then my husband came to the hospital and he still beat the obstetrician to the hospital. So I feel pretty confident and that was an emergency situation. So I know it's going to take about 15 minutes should there be an emergency and my and an ambulance should be able to get me there while they're prepping the theatre for me and my midwife can administer emergency care should she need to. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into a high risk woman and the woman behind the choices because we're not being difficult. Um, we're not being rebellious, we just do what we feel is, well I'm doing what I feel is safest for me and for my baby. And I feel really positive about birth and I want to keep it that way. Now my only fear is that I phone up when I'm in labour and they say to me there's nobody there to attend to you. And I know this happens to loads of women that plan a home birth. And I feel really worried about that. That's my only worry. And I have interviewed an independent midwife and a fantastic independent midwife.
But the reality is I can't really afford an independent midwife. And I know many women can't afford an independent midwife. 